After reading this book for the second time, I took a walk on the beach below the oil refineries on San Francisco Bay. Seagulls careened in the afternoon sun. A tanker hooked up a half a mile out on the jetty. As I watched idly, my thoughts still occupied with the book, a strange fantasy arose in my mind. It was a scenario of what would happen if Americans no longer found animal products attractive. Say they simply woke up one day and found meat and poultry and dairy products unappealing. Given U.S. eating habits, that speculation borders on the absurd, I know. But suppose some magical transformation took place that would diminish our attraction to animal-based foods and at the same time increase our appetite and enjoyment for other foods that really nourish and are far better for us. What would happen? What would it mean for our lives and our world? Would that tanker, for example, still be making its deliveries of imported oil? Would those refineries stretch back for as many miles as they do now? Would there be as much DDT in the gulls overhead or in my own body? Would they and I be likely to live longer and healthier lives? The research that John Robbins has done for us in this book, gathering and distilling an extraordinary amount of little-known but vital information, allows us to deduce what would happen in such a scenario. From the evidence accrued in hundreds of recent medical, agricultural, economic, and environmental studies, which he presents in terms easy for the layperson to grasp, we can indeed estimate the results if Americans were to change their eating habits and kick the habit of over-consuming animal proteins and animal fats. I imagine then the scenario as I walk along the water's edge. The effects on our physical health are immediate. The incidence of cancer and heart attack, the nation's biggest killers, drops precipitously. So does the incidence of many other diseases now demonstrably and causally linked to consumption of animal proteins and fats, such as osteoporosis, a major affliction among older women. My mother suffers from it. I fear it. The hormonal imbalances causing miscarriages and increasing aberrations of sexual development similarly drop away as we cease ingesting with our meat, poultry, and milk the drugs pumped into our livestock. So do the neurological disorders and birth defects due to pesticides and other chemicals as we begin to eat lower on the food chain where these poisons are far less concentrated. Mother's milk, where they concentrate in greatest intensity, becomes safe again. We can nurse our babies without fear. Since these toxins attack the gene pool itself, causing irreversible damage, the change in diet improves the health of my children's children's children and generations to come. The social, ecological, and economic consequences as we Americans turn away from animal food products are equally remarkable. We find that the grain we previously used to fatten livestock can now feed five times the U.S. population. So we have become able to alleviate malnutrition and hunger on a worldwide scale. We discover what it is like for us to sit down to eat without feeling guilt. Once relieved of it, we realize how great was that burden, that unspoken sense of being watched and judged by those who were hungry. We find ourselves also relieved of fear. For on a semi-conscious level, we knew all along that the old disparities in consumption were turning our planet into a tinderbox, breeding resentments and desperations that could only eventuate in war. We breathe easier, letting ourselves be emotionally in touch again with all our brothers and sisters. The great forests of the world that we had been decimating for grazing purposes, that was, we discover, the major cause of deforestation, begin to grow again. Oxygen-producing trees are no longer sacrificed for cholesterol-producing steaks. The water crisis eases. As we stop raising and grinding up cattle for hamburgers, we discover that ranching and farm factories had been the major drain on our water resources. The amount now available for irrigation and hydroelectric power doubles. Meanwhile, the change in diet frees over 90% of the fossil fuels previously used to produce food. With this liberation of water, energy, and fossil